Um, thanks again for joining. We really appreciate everybody taking some time out of their busy schedule to join us on our first ever Smarting Client Only webinar. Exciting. Super exciting. Good stuff. Um, uh, my name is Cassius. My colleague over here is Bill. Um, we've been with the firm for just over two years now. Uh, employees number four and five, I think. And so uh, we definitely appreciate all our clients. We wouldn't be in the position that we're in today without you guys. So thanks a bunch for uh, doing business with us, uh, trusting us with your valuable parking data. We really appreciate it. Um, the purpose of this webinar is really just to highlight some of the interesting things that we were able to build over the course of the summer. Uh, hopefully you guys as clients had a chance to get to the beach and uh, lay down a towel and soak up some sun. I know, Bill, did you get any vacation? You know, I kind of did. I went down to San Diego and I went to Coronado. You know, who says a black man can't? Because I got burned. I got burned. It was a good time, though. Shout out to San Diego. All right. Shout out to San Diego. I don't know. I didn't take any time off. I went on a couple of different hikes, and uh, Smarky and Ears were, were fairly busy. I think they built eight new features over the course of the summer. So, so that's pretty exciting. Um, We'll get going here. Uh, here we are. Uh, that's my colleague Bill, the handsome man with the parking parked cars in the background, and that's me. Uh, and so, um, yeah, we're really just here to walk you guys through the, the eight new features that we were able to build over the course of the summer. Eight new features and hold on, hold on, guys, and one beard, because because that beard is new. So maybe you know, <laughs> the beard is new. Uh, if you guys haven't seen me in a while. Uh, you know, feel free to actually start the, the questions early for any positive feedback you guys might have on the beard. Uh, I was dating this girl for a while and she wanted me to, to grow it out. And anyways, we broke up, but I, I kind of dig in the beard. So uh, yeah, only positive feedback in the questions box though. Uh, we, we appreciate that. Um, all right, to get things going, I think we gotta uh, provide a little bit of a context. We have some rules here, right? Any webinar, we've gotta have ground rules. Things can't get out of control. And then a little bit of an agenda. We have one rule, guys, one main rule, ask as many questions as possible. That's it, keep them flowing. Right, and if you have a question, you have to ask it, right? So by there's, definition, there's none of this, like I've got a question in my head and I don't wanna ask it. Uh, if, if you've got something that's on your mind, you should have a question box. We're gonna show you where that is. Just go ahead and, uh, and throw it in there. We're trying to make this as interactive as possible. If we've got time, we're gonna do Q&A and feedback um after each individual feature um if things get out of hand we'll have to we'll have to push it to the end but it's really our hope to try to make this as interactive as possible again we have only smarting clients um on the call so we're all uh one big happy family exactly feel free right and then just in terms of an agenda we want to break down the feature set that we built you guys or built out this summer into, into three different categories so we're going to start with uh, some of our business intelligence oriented features. And so these are things that we're hopeful our clients can leverage in terms of making better decisions uh, and arriving at faster decisions um, when you and your colleagues need to make a decision, a business decision around how to run your parking. Um, those of you guys familiar with this marketing pitch know that we talk a lot about parallels to the airline and hotel industries. And a lot of what we're trying to do here at Smarting is really just replicate some of the yield management success that airlines and hotels uh, have uh, built out over the last 20 years and apply that methodology to parking. And so whether it comes to uh, smart making pricing decisions and for inventory allocation decisions, we designed a handful of features that we kind of see within our yield management value proposition. Um, and then last but not least, we've done some interesting things uh, from a digital wayfinding and information transparency perspective. And so um, we'll chat about that as well. Yeah. Bill, there's, in order to make this kind of cohesive, we, we built a little story around, you know, how we're going to show these features. And so uh, basically, Bill and I were, were parking managers and we worked for, for Bruce Wayne, right? Bruce Wayne is the, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Batman. Batman. So, and Batman uh, owns a handful of garages in Gotham City. He also controls the on-street operation. So he's really got an iron fist around parking in Gotham. And so you and I were preparing for a big meeting with Bruce next week. Next week, next Thursday. And it's a really good thing that we have access to this marketing tool because that's going to allow us to leverage some of these new features and really get prepared for uh, this meeting next week. And so I'm excited. I'm excited too. I'm a little bit nervous, but this is why we're putting in the work ahead of time, trying to get ready for this big meeting with, exactly. with Mr. Wayne. Uh, guys, I uh, mentioned earlier, we really want you guys to ask questions and try to make this interactive. 
And so, uh, uh, please ask as many questions as possible. Um, we'll go ahead and, and get things going. So, without further ado, uh, we're going to get out of the slides and get into the dashboard. And our very first feature set that we're going to talk about concerns last year comparison. And so, um, here we are uh, taking a look at the overview screen for City Hall. Um, hopefully, most of you guys are, are familiar with the screen. We're taking a look at real-time occupancies and then our 24-hour view. But for this meeting with Bruce next week, you know, he cares about revenues, right? That's the primary thing that we're always talking about with Mr. Wayne, how's the garage doing? But more than nominal revenues, right? He wants to see trends. How are we doing on a relative basis? And so um, I really think this last year comparison feature is going to be helpful. Uh, and so in order to find that, we need to go to analytics, revenues, and uh, we'll go ahead and we'll just take a look at, let's go for the last year. Just try to try to take a, uh, a bigger picture of, of what's going on here. So, oh wow, it looks like the garage is, is pretty healthy. Just under 600K in revenues uh, for the call the first half of the year here. And then uh, in March, it looks like we have a nice little seasonal pickup. We're beating 600K um, all through June, although there's a little bit of a slowdown here in July. So, um, but like we said, Bill, it's not, it's not nominal numbers that matter. It's relative numbers. And yeah. so uh, when we click on last year comparison, what, is, what does that do for us? The ability is to take a look at what's happened last year compared to this year. Pretty simple, but overall, we want to determine if there's seasonality or if there's something we can dig a little bit deeper into. And, and really, it's all about where we're trending, right? Correct. And so what last year comparison does for us is when we hover over, um, you see the lighter bar to the left of the original darker bar, and that's going to show you basically that previous month last year. So here we're taking a look at October 2016 versus October 2015. And you can see that this was a pretty nice month for the City Hall garage. Um, we were up 3% from contract revenue, 4% from online reservations, and 3% from uh, transient, resulting kind of a nice 3% bump in revenues relative to last year. So um, we can quickly scroll through and see that, for the most part, revenues at this facility have been trending in the right direction. We're going up. Looks like we got a little bit of weakness in December. We're down in December. Looks like mostly due to uh, some weakness in the Contact and, contract and transient business. Uh, but otherwise, things are, you know, anywhere from 5 to 10% to up. Looks like we've also got a little bit of weakness in April. Um, but otherwise, the garages have been strong. And so just in terms of trying to forecast out to Bruce, I mean, for the most part, maybe we can try to forecast out revenue increases of, of 5 to 10%. But I do have some concerns about what's going on in, in December and April. And so that warrants a little bit of uh, further diligence, right? Yeah, I think we should dive in a little bit deeper to kind of understand that. Okay, um, well team, that's basically the, the crux of the last year comparison feature. So to the extent that you guys have questions on this feature, please go ahead and type those in now uh, while we um, address those. Uh, and then uh, while you guys put in the questions, I do wanna let you know that last year comparison exists across all of our revenue transactions uh, and revenue per ticket charts, as well as occupancy. So you can see here, our price per ticket is up relative to last year. We go ahead and, and take a look at occupancy. Um, let's take a look at average occupancy just for this last week here. But let's do the past month. And so uh, you'll see the last year comparison has been turned on. Same methodology applies, the lighter line um, is associated with that previous time last year, and so we can see how occupancy is trending year over year. Overall, pretty flat, though. Pretty flat, and, and that's because over long periods of, uh, of time, these things tend to average out. Yep. If we get a little bit more selective, let's say we're only interested in how the garage is performing on Mondays, you're going to be able to notice a little bit more deviation. So just in terms of an entry perspective, one thing that's interesting to me here is we're seeing quite a big bump in entries at 5 a.m., uh, last year we were have, averaging 55 transient entries at five. This year it's 84. So that's interesting. Some different behavior in the garage. So might warrant a little bit more deeper uh, right. inspection. Yeah. Um, all right, team. Well, it doesn't look like we have any questions, and so let's head back over to our revenue chart. 
And uh, the goal, Bill, is really, you know, when we go to talk to Batman, or excuse me, Mr. Wayne. Yes, he doesn't. Please. No, please. gotta stay formal. Yes, yeah. uh, <laughs> Mr. Wayne. Uh, that you know, we want to be able to project out these revenues, but he's going to have some questions around what happened in December and April. Why were those the only two months that we didn't hit our goal? And so, um, what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and adjust our date range. Uh, we're going to go back to uh, April 1st and take this to April 30th. Reload the chart here. And we should see that our, our granularity hopefully adjusts here. Oh, no, this is a whole year. There we go. There we go. Now we're seeing daily revenues. So we still have last year comparison turned on. So you can see now that uh, our lighter shade is basically day by day. And uh, most clients should be aware, basically, we're always trying to compare apples to apples, which means we're going to be comparing uh, Monday, April 3rd, against Monday, April 4th. So we're trying to find the, the best comparison in terms of day-to-day. Uh, -day. That way we're not comparing like a Monday to a Sunday or right. along those lines. Yeah. Uh, so Smarty takes care of that for us, which is kind of nice. Um, for the most part, Bill, I'm seeing the darker color purple it is really right on. You know, we're beating on most days. Um, but we do see this, this giant drop right here. Uh, what happened? We're, it looks like we're down just under $10,000 on, on April 8th. Hmm. 2017. I was there. You were in, I, I think I was off that week, but you, you were, were managing yeah. the rough. I yeah. was there. I was there. I don't remember exactly, but I mean, nine grand seems like a lot. Of time. So there is this handy little blue bubble. So let's go ahead and click on that. So, oh, yeah. here it is. So this is Smart Houston Annotations feature, right? Correct. And so basically what we're able to do is, is click on this gray bar underneath our charts and basically add in notes. And so uh, thank goodness that, you know, back in April, you had the foresight to enter this note. Uh, take a look. Um, oh, it's a cherry block. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember Sam, he actually reserved three floors in the garage to put some of the equipment and some of the other things as well. So good thing is I also saved his email address. We want to make sure we bring him back next year too. Right. So this way Bruce can account for this revenue. But he definitely got a check, but we can you know, circle back with him on that. Yeah. So. Um, so this is actually really great that we put this in here because even though it shows that we were down in April, we just got paid $10,000 from the Cherry Blossom guy outside of the revenue control system. And so correct, we didn't, um, we did have a question come through uh, from Adam Raffle. Adam, how are you? Thanks so much for asking. Uh, you win a prize of some sort. We'll have to figure that out after the fact. Sure. We're asking the first question. Um, the question is how does marketing track, track contract revenues um, this is something that we're trying to do more and more for our clients. Um, typically, these revenues are housed in separate databases outside of the park system. And so just get in contact with your smart representative, or better yet, just shoot Bill a note because he's a smart guy anyway. Uh, and, and we'll talk about the database in which your uh, contract revenues are stored and how we can go ahead and integrate that into marketing. So it's, uh, it's kind of a new realm that we're venturing into and hopefully it's something that we can do for more of our clients. So. Uh, hopefully that answers your question, Adam. Thanks for asking. Um, all right, so we figured out, thanks to the annotation, that there was this big uh, the cherry blossom festival. So we're really not off in April, but we still have to figure out what happened in December, right? So let's take this back to December of 2016. Um, if I remember correctly, Bill, you took a lot of vacation in December of 2016. It was a good. I mean, it was a good month. Right. <laughs> it, was it was a good month for you, but I was, uh, I was working. Um, and so. Here we are taking a look. Um, it looks like there's a little bit of weakness uh, here. Uh, this is the 25th and the 26th. Of, um, seems like there's some bubbles here. Go ahead and check those out. Okay, uh, so smartphone has gone ahead and auto-populated some holidays, so that's helpful. Got Christmas Day and kind of an observed Christmas Day. Nobody works on the day after. And so that's where uh, we're going to see a little bit of weakness. Interestingly enough, though, we see a, a giant drop on uh, Tuesday, December 13th. We're down almost seventeen thousand dollars on this day. More. Uh, so uh, looks like we do have a handy little uh, annotation. Um, let's see what's going on. Oh, uh, now I remember. Snowstorm. It was a huge snowstorm in Gotham. Yep. And Bill, you know the residents of Gotham City. I mean, those guys super resilient. The employees are always showing up. They almost never uh, take up a day of work. But this really, this snowstorm was really different from the rest. The whole city shut down. 
obviously a big component of the people that are driving demand here in the facility are, you know, they work at City Hall and whatnot. So um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's good that we that I n noted that down. You were in the Bahamas, right? So, yeah. Hey, come on. <laughs> so uh, lucky you, you missed this event, but it did impact the garage. Um, I did have an idea uh, okay. back in when this happened. Um, there was a big road closure. Uh, basically, uh, Gotham needs to plow the street, a snowstorm, and people needed to move their cars off the street. So uh, the idea, it was a little bit too late. You can think about offering uh, some discounts uh, if there's a big storm in the future. That way, if the garage is impacted, um, we can go ahead and uh, offer some discounts. And, yeah, you know. Yeah, because if you know a little bit beforehand, too, you can do something. So, right. Bruce is definitely going to ask us about this, but it's good to know that we have some type of a, an answer for it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's a smart guy. So, um, uh, teammates and clients on the call, if you guys have any questions about the annotations tool, now is your time to ask. Uh, we want to hear from you guys. Um, while you guys put in your questions, a little bit more about the annotations tool. So, uh, if you input an annotation, um, Let's just say this is a big shopping day or something along those lines. These annotations are going to go ahead and uh, show across the dashboard for anybody who has access. So you'll notice here that they popped up on uh, the transactions and then also on our price per ticket chart. They also do flow over to occupancy. I have a question uh, from Juan Carrero down in Santa Monica. How are you doing, Juan? Uh, can an annotation be done once and applied to all parking locations? That's, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Um, so what I know we've done for other clients who keep, who keep like a very good track of different events and holidays and weather patterns, if you guys have like an Excel sheet that tracks all of the different events uh, and that information is in a way that basically like if it's an Excel or CSV or something along those lines, we can actually take that information and auto-populate your annotations chart. Um, but currently, one, I don't think we have that functionality. I know um, in your dashboard, we have a, a view all Santa Monica, and so that might be a, a, good, um, a, a good way to get around it in the meantime. But that's a great piece of feedback, and we're going to go ahead and relay that onto the Smart Engineering team. Carla Hansen from Walnut Creek. What's going on, Carla? Asks, can annotations be exported into reports? And the, the answer to that, Carla, is unfortunately no, uh, but uh, same as Juan, we're going to go ahead and shoot that feedback over to our, our client, uh, our good friends, the Smart Man Engineering Team. They're sitting behind us right now. Um, they look a little lazy they look, over there. So. I mean, <laughs> one of them was busy. So one of them is busy. Uh, we'll see what these guys can do for you guys. Um, our development cycle is, is pretty quick. We push uh, new features onto the dashboard and tweaks on a weekly basis. and so. Um, yeah, uh, what Carl is talking about here is uh, export functionality inside of Smarking. Um, you can go ahead and download these into Excel and PNG. This is actually something that we're looking on improving anyway. So yeah. it's, a, it's a good piece of feedback. Perfect timing. Yeah. All right, um, Juan, Carla, I, we're going to give out uh, prizes for second and third questions. Uh, we'll figure <laughs> yeah. that out. Yeah. Okay. Box. Box. <laughs> You're going to get a nice gift. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, all right, well, moving right along. So we've got our annotations, and that's basically telling us that on the whole, the garage is trending up in revenues from anywhere between 5 or 10%. Yep. And then we've got two off months. Uh, in April, really wasn't an off month because we got paid 10000 for the Cherry Blossom Festival. Correct. And then in December, there was that terrible snowstorm that I had to live through, and you were soaking up some sun. But, uh, and so, you know, barring any some significant deviations, we can actually go ahead and submit our, our budget for, for Bruce, Mr. Wayne. Um, and I'm pretty yeah. confident. Yeah, so um, the good news is Smarting built a, a handy new feature around budget uh, for each of our locations. And so there's, uh, it's pretty simple, there's the, the track tab and the set tab. And so what this allows us to do, uh, if the dashboard decides to load, is we can see our current revenues and then uh, track those against what our budget goal for that month is. And so here you can see the orange goal, our budget in March of 2017 was half a million dollars uh, and we were able to beat it um, by a pretty handy amount. 
you also notice here that the annotations flow over. So even though we see a, a, a slight beat, we know that we actually beat that by a significant more amount because there was that payment that was processed absolutely outside the dashboard. Um, and then uh, what we can do, if we can assume that we're trying to grow revenues anywhere between five and 10%, we can actually just go ahead and say, hey, Bruce, guess what? We're on top of it. So we put 600K in January, 605, and then we can go ahead and enter that information. Let's say, what do you think, 610? Obviously, before the meeting, we'll be a little bit more diligent here and maybe uh, do some numbers in Excel. But here's uh, 610,000 for March, and then we can go back to the track tab. Um, right now, you can only look at current years, um, but the minute uh, January 2018 rolls around, we're going to be able to see and just basically tell Mr. Wayne, hey, look, we're on top of it. So, okay. awesome. Um, pretty simple. Uh, any questions on the budget functionality? Now's your time to ask, team. Matt Andrews in Chicago is asking, how is marking communicating with the equipment? So, Matt, I'm assuming uh, you're you're talking about how we're communicating with the parks equipment. There's a number of different methodologies that we employ in order to pull parking data. Uh, hopefully these guys have an API. A lot of times that's not the case, um, but if they do, they have, they have an API. We're happy to pull the data through the API. Um, other methods include uh, accessing the operational database and writing a, a, a quick program to basically convert select fields inside the database into a CSV file and upload those to Smarking. Uh, and then um, we can also access uh, data through various uh, web reporting tools. So let's say uh, you've got your multi-parking revenues housed in a, in a program and you can run a report from that program. Uh, if you go ahead and provide smarting with login credentials to that portal, what we'll do is we'll write um, some code that logs into that portal on a regular basis, runs that report, takes the numbers that we need off of that report and then, and then populate our database. We, we house everything in the cloud in, in AWS. Um, hopefully that was able to answer your question. Another one from Matt in Chicago. Will you be able to automatically upload daily weather temperatures for comparison of revenue traffic? This is something that we get uh, from a ton of different clients. I know that early marketing programs actually had weather data um, inputted in. Um, it's See, something that's, yeah. Something that's uh, definitely on, on top of our mind. Um, I guess my only concern, Matt, and you know, we can follow up offline, but if we upload daily weather, then you're gonna have blue bubbles on the sanitations tab uh, over and over and over and over again. So it might get a little crowded. So there are some um, concerns that we have from a design perspective. How do, we, how do we visualize this information in a way that's not gonna um, impact our uh, user's ability to quickly understand the information that they need? Um, moving right along now for the budget, it does not break up transient and contract correct. Uh, no, so the budget does break up uh, contract and transient information. So if we hover over here, you can see in April, um, we did 134,000 in contract, 15 from online reservation portals like Spot Hero and ParkWiz, and then 4,066. Um, marketing veterans will know that we can break down your data in a number of different ways, which are all viewable on the budget tab. So here you can see at City Hall, we've got a day rate, an early bird, and an evening rate. And so here you can see basically that information visualized in a different way. You just have to use uh, this handy drop down here. The next iteration of budgets will be able to break down individual um, tiers into separate budgets as well. Okay. So it's coming along, still in beta, but you know, your feedback is you know, golden. So we're right. making sure that we're able to collect all the feedback and then update as we move forward. Um, we've got some questions from uh, municipal clients coming in around budgets. Carla in Walnut Creek wants to know, uh, can budgets be shown as a fiscal year instead of a calendar year? Um, that's very interesting. So uh, basically the idea would be that we can set what the fiscal year is, which might be different from December to December or something along those lines. Um, already, I feel like this needs to be improved so that we can take a look at 2018, especially yes. if we've inputted um, new information. And so, okay. um, good feedback, Carla. Uh, we're going to talk to Malkai about that one. Juan down in Santa Monica. Same question. Will marketing roll out a fiscal year budget option next year? Well, that's two data points. <laughs> let's, let's go ahead and do that. I think if two clients ask for it, we have to build it. I wish that was a rule. I know, right? Right. <laughs> we can show overview, uh, overview page with the budget as well. 
Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. So um, the, once the budget information is inputted, right? So we're we've inputted uh, just under six hundred thousand, five hundred ninety thousand dollars for this year in September. Uh, so we can go ahead and hit overview, and uh, you're going to be able to track that budget number right here on this page in the revenue benchmarks section. Um, we're also going to show you that revenue against where we were last year on this uh, percent of the month, and then a month to date total number as well. So um, we're beating where we were last year at City Hall Bell and feeling pretty good. $362,000 versus 344 last year. Um, our budget's been raised, but look, we're 61% of the way there. I don't know. I'm feeling good. How about you? I'm feeling great. I mean, it's day 20 and we're 61%. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now that we've got kind of our budget goal for 2018 laid out, uh, we're going to be able to go to, to Mr. Wayne and let him know, you know, this is what we think we can do at the garage. Um, but you and me, Bill, we're professionals. And we're not trying to meet goals. Right, I'm trying to be goals. We gotta be goals. And when the smartphone sales guys sold me on this product, you know, one of the things that they were saying was they taken a lot of the methodology that was, you know, tried and true in the airline and hotel industry and trying to apply that department, basically trying to replicate some of the yield management success. And so I think they built a, a number of different features around yield management, really. How are we making pricing and inventory allocation decisions? designed to increase revenues or make our operation more efficient. So um, I think it's all something along the lines of an uh, oversell analysis tool um, that's going to allow us to make some inventory allocation decisions just for our monthly partners, right? Yes. Yeah. So um, which garage do you think uh, we've got the most opportunity? Um, in Wayne, Wayne Tower. That's right. So in Wayne Tower, we've got like a host of different financial firms, actually, that are taking out there. It's a lot of monthly partners in there. And so uh, we just navigate over to our oversell tab. And when you can see that we've selected uh, a breakdown by tenant group. And, and just as we suspected, we know that there's a big monthly component here. We're basically going to see all of our different tenants. So all these big financial firms that are, are headquartered in Gotham, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, UBS, all these guys, tenants in Wayne Tower and taking up a lot of space in the garage. And so um, oversell analysis, that's basically something that we did kind of like on an annual basis. It took, it took us a lot of time just in terms of, uh, you know, putting the Excel sheets together and trying to analyze the behavior. I'm excited about this tool because it seems like it's going to speed up that process in a, in a pretty significant way. Yeah, I think it basically will reduce three Excel spreadsheets to three clicks. Wow. So, I mean, it's pretty exciting. And so what that allows us to do is rather than try to do this maybe once, we can start to do oversell analysis a little bit on a more uh, regular interval. And so we know that there's seasonality especially amongst these bankers here that, uh, you know, maybe we can take advantage of. So um, let's take a look at what happened during the summer. So we'll just go ahead and we'll hit past three months. So this is going to load up data from June 1st of 2017 to August 31st, 2017. And just as we suspected, um, the mass daily peak occupancy for our B of A group within this date range was 663. And so uh, Mr. Wayne actually had a uh, a lease agreement with Bank of America. I don't think it's 1,200. I made a mistake. So we can go ahead and we can edit this. 1,100. So that's kind of like the maximum number of spaces that we want them to take up. And then we can go ahead and, and enter the number of card holders associated with this specific tenant group. And so yeah. that's, uh, what is it? I think it's like something like uh, 1,250. I was off color. Yeah. yeah. And then what happens here is, given this information and the specific behavior associated with this group, Marketing actually goes ahead and, and makes our oversell calculation for us. So uh, their math is, uh, I don't understand this, Bill. You're, you're the real industry so. standard uh, diversity and oversell ratio. So we use the same methodology that's been used and tried and true over the industry for the last, I don't know, 30, 40 years. So. And rather than me having to do this in Excel, I can just go ahead and make this happen uh, inside Smarking. Exactly. exactly. Pretty cool. Um, how about Goldman? So we only have uh, 230 people who are holding uh, cardholder passes in, uh, for the Goldman and only 200 spaces. So it seems like these B of A guys, especially during the summer, pretty lazy. They don't come in. They don't come in. It's no. like for every card we give out, a half a person comes in. <laughs> <laughs> so if these people are asking for cards during the summer, we should, we should be shipping them. Totally. Right? Goldman, maybe we can afford to be a little bit more stingy here. Um, but I am concerned about the seasonal component. So let's see, let's see how their behavior changes uh, during the spring. This is just April and May. Hit submit, load up to fresh data. Oh, that's not too shabby. Let's include March in here. 
oh wow. So all of a sudden the, the behavior has changed in a pretty meaningful way. It looks like the B of A employees, if we include March in the data, we've got uh, max daily peak occupancy of uh, 1,051 parkers. And so we need to be a little bit more cognizant yeah. of their behavior in the spring than we are in the summer, simply because so I guess they're a little bit more diligent showing up to work. And they're showing up to work, yeah. yeah. So um, just in terms of really trying to beat our budget goal, trying to be uh, more frequent and um, a little bit more targeted in how we're overselling our monthly parking passes, I think it might move the needle for us. Totally. And even the Goldman guys show up a lot more, too. Yeah. So being able to look at the behavior across different tenants is definitely valuable. Totally. So hopefully Bruce will be happy with this. Uh, team, if you guys have any questions on oversell, now's the time to ask them, please. Um, so Matt Andrews in Chicago has a, a question around PCI compliance. How does your software communicate with the revenue control equipment? Uh, it, there's a number of different methodologies that are employed. Um, like I said, there's the, the API. There's no PCI concerns because we're not interfacing with any sensitive information. It's the same as the, as the web address. Really the only time where PCI comes into play is uh, when um, we're getting direct access to the database. And so uh, we have to be very uh, cautious and cognizant and work closely with your revenue control vendor, as well as the, uh, the operator, whoever yep. is in charge, uh, holds the merchant of record to make sure that um, we're not interfering with anybody's PCI compliance. Smarting wants absolutely nothing to do with credit card information or personally sensitive information. It's simply just a liability for us. We're still a small company, 14 people. If we do something wrong with that kind of information, uh, they can put us out of business. And so um, we're trying to be super diligent and only really get after the anonymous transaction level data that we need. And so for API access and web scraping, there, there are no PCI concerns. Unfortunately, for a lot of these legacy park vendors, um, neither of those options are available. And we need to access the data directly from the database. And that's where um, we need to work closely with our partners to make sure that we're doing everything in a, in a PCI compliant fashion. So it's something we're very cognizant of. Um, Adam Raffle asked, does smart contract validations received separate from transient revenue? Uh, we do. Um, any data that's uh, tracked in the underlying uh, database can be visualized inside smarting. So we've got clients who own uh, big retail assets in urban areas and they want to track validations associated with Neiman Marcus or big retailers. And so to the extent that that data is in the underlying field, you just let us know, hey, I want to see it, and we'll go ahead and break that information out for you. It's really an iterative process back and forth between our clients um, and, uh, and, and make, make that work. Adam's got another question for us. In order to utilize the oversell feature, must the parking manager either enter the tenant name for the, each card and the access system? Uh, Adam, that's a really good question. Um, it really happens on a case-by-case -case basis. Sometimes that information is stored within the park's equipment. Sometimes we get uh, like a, a card ID number and our clients need to provide us with a mapping document so that we know uh, card ID 11111 belongs to Bank of America, but card ID 22222 belongs to, to Goldman Sachs. Um, Matt Field asks, can empty space counts be integrated with this function? That's actually a really good idea. Uh, Matt, for the time being, you know, what I would recommend is just, you know, jump over to the analytics tab on occupancy, and then, like, let's say we knew that the past three months here, uh, we can take a look at hourly occupancy over the state range and really understand, okay, well, where was that empty space? And just like all smart and graphs, right, we can break this down by tenant group. If we're, if we're trying to understand the occupancy by tenant, right? So select all, select none, and then we can just view the behavior associated with our uh, Bank of America employees. So we hear the lazy summer bankers not getting it done. And we've got another question. Uh, in the case of Morgan Stanley, how is their peak usage greater than the number of cardholders Adam, you caught us with our pants down. Uh, don't be, don't be uh, too mad at us. This is all fake data, and so every once in a while, um, you're going to see the numbers not make sense. Um, as much as Bill and I love pretending to be parking managers in Gotham City, in reality, we work for Smarting, and so uh, <laughs> as long as you allocate the right car holders and allocate the spaces, we're going to give you all of the uh, behavior of that group. So as long as the first two inputs are entered correctly. We're going to give you the actual behavior, which is the, the hard work. Right. 
Um, all right, well, in the interest of time, um, we're gonna move along here. Uh, one thing I will note, guys, is you can see the beta, um, we're working on improving these tools. We've gotten a little bit of feedback from clients asking us, how do we oversell online reservation and how do we oversell transient? Um, basically, that's uh, something that should be removed from this tool, we're working on it. Um, and so for the time being, you can just go ahead and unclick this here. Um, you can't oversell transient parkers. Although if any of our clients figure out how to do that, let us know. I'm in. Yeah, we'll figure it out too. Yeah, yeah we're happy to work with you. So um, just know that we're, we're improving on these tools over time. Um, okay, so we figured out, I think, you know, that's gonna be pretty good. We're gonna be able to beat our monthly budget goal in terms of uh, monthly parkers. But obviously right. there's, you know, there's other components here, right? There's transient parkers and then we're hearing more and more about aggregators. So anything smart thing to do from us on an aggregator perspective? We gotta get creative in working with these aggregators. We're seeing them come up more and more often, especially in um, central business districts, especially in big cities, metropolitan cities. So we gotta get creative in terms of pricing and allocation. So I think there's something cool that we can use now. Yeah, so I, I got an email from the Smartin guys uh, just the other day uh, talking about the online rate survey. And so I think this is a feature that they helped build out just in terms of helping us monitor how our competitors are pricing their uh, online parking products on various sales portals. And so um, I guess what this screen here is showing us is um, uh, we're seeing basically all sales portals, so Parkways, Fry Hero, and Parking Panda for all days and then uh, just for the upcoming week. And then Bill, what does this range mean? How can, I, how can someone be charging 12, anywhere from 12 to $74 in the, at this center plaza garage? This doesn't make any sense to me. The cool thing is if you hover over, you can actually get the breakdown of the different prices across the different aggregators. Now, also, we're showing you all of your competitors within one mile of your own facility. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So what this is basically showing me is that this specific garage, the Center Plaza garage at 75 Somerset Street, that's weird. It's an address in Boston. I thought we were in Gotham. I don't know. Uh, all right. Well, we'll move on. Yeah. Um, I think so <laughs> it seems like what this garage is doing is actually pricing parking differently on different portals. And so they've got this one stay at $24 on Parkwiz, but $38 on Spot Hero, and they're charging $72.45 on Parking Panda. I, feel, I kind of feel bad for anybody buying parking on Parking Panda. <laughs> but each one of these aggregators have different consumer bases, though. Oh. Different demographics who follow them. So it's interesting to see the different rates across different uh, portals in order to, to price a little. That's super interesting. Um, and so what? what this is basically showing us is basically different products. We can add a new product in there, right? Correct. So I, I think at City Hall, we actually get a decent amount of uh, afternoon business. And so if we go ahead and just enter 5 p.m. and like the, your classic dinner stay is, you know, three hours, or, you know, seven, seven o'clock reservation. Yep. Um, go ahead and, and put this in here. Okay, and so now we're gonna be able to track just that specific product. Yep. Very cool. So now, Bill, do I need to be logging into Smarting like every two hours to really monitor this? Because people are changing prices all the time, and I got other things to be doing than, than logging into Smarting all the time. No, the cool thing is you can easily set your own price here that you actually care about, and two, set an alert. Because, alert? Yeah, not just because at the end of the day, having this information is great, but you can't make a decision unless you actually understand what's going on. So I think there's an alert function that's interesting well, let's check right out what there. this bell says. Okay, well, so here's the notification setting. So what this is basically telling me is that I can get an email uh, uh, anytime a certain number of criteria are met. So let's say anytime one of my competitors changes his afternoon rate by more than $2, I can just set up and get, get an email anytime. Absolutely. So this is something I used to spend like two or three hours a day basically going to these portals, and maybe I would do it in the morning to try to get the pricing information. Yeah. But by the afternoon, it's, it's just totally changed. Exactly. And the cool thing is, too, when this comes through your email, if you're running around, you know, we're running around different locations, we can easily pull it up on our smartphone, tap the link, and go directly into the dashboard. Wow. Pretty neat. Um, so this will be something that I think that we can use to really help drive some incremental revenues associated uh, with the online sales portals, um, which a lot of our clients have been doing actually to, to great success. And so yeah. I think the key is, you know, when are we selling uh, inventory online uh, and where are our price points? When we know the garage is busy, maybe we want to be on the top end yep. of the market, but when the garage is slow, we can really offer that, uh, those online reservations below maybe where our competitors are pricing, try to drive some incremental revenues through the garage. Exactly. And for me, you know me, I have that fear of missing.
Um, um, so <laughs> setting the alert, if you know, six days down the road, there's a you know concert with Taylor Swift, Cash is a big fan. If that happens, uh, we'll be able to know that hey, pricing's a little bit different. Uh, you know, next Saturday, so let's go ahead and bump up our online rates as well. Guys, if you have questions about the online rate survey, now is your time to ask. Please send them in. Um, speaking of events, I got a hunch. We're seeing $30 to $100 at 75 State Street coming up here. Uh, looks like uh, Wednesday, only 42 42 and it's $100 on Friday. What's going on on Friday? That's so, uh, really close to the TD Gardens, and that's your boy, Ed Sheeran's in town. Oh, that's my guy, Ed. Okay. He's playing. That's your guy. He'll be there. Didn't you get me tickets to the show? I did, but I'm going with somebody else. Oh, oh damn it. it. It's all right. It doesn't look like I'd be able to afford to park anyways at $100. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like I said, we could park in my garage. So. True. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Let's see if we've got any questions coming through on the online rate survey. Um, oh, so Carlos from Walnut Creek asked, could we do this with on-street pricing in other cities? So that's something that's super interesting and is uh, something that we're thinking about and kind of what we would call like our offline rate survey. And so we're privy to a whole bunch of different parking data. Um, you know, it gets a little tricky, Carla, just around data privacy. The way that we view things is that uh, the data that our clients give us really belong to them and that um, we need to be uh, very judicial in terms of sharing that data. So you can almost imagine maybe municipal smarting clients opting in to understand how other people are pricing their uh, stays. Um, and then for uh, private sector clients, um, we've had some requests around trying to build out offline rate surveys just for their own garages. So if you're a, a big operator or a big real estate owner, um, we actually might be able to retrieve your rate table from the parks equipment and show you what that rate is. Uh, the goal being just to give you a little bit more transparency into what your rates are across your portfolio. So, um, that's, that's something that we're thinking about. Uh, Adam Raffle asking, to confirm, the parking managers do not need to share data here. Smarking is pulling all of the rate information from the various aggregators. That's exactly correct. So all of this data that you're seeing on your screen, Adam, is publicly available. Um, and what we've done is we've uh, uh, built different ways to query the ParkWiz and Spot Hero API. And so uh, actually the, the neat thing about this feature is that we don't even need an integration with your parks equipment in order to get this going. This is something that we can provide to you uh, prior to getting the integration done with a mono or data park, um, which, you know, smart and client uh, understand sometimes the, the parks vendors move a little bit more slowly uh, than we'd like. And it's kind of a nice way to start using the product before we're able to achieve the actual integration. So um, yeah, nothing, nothing that we need from you guys um, except an address. You give us an address, we can give you all the rates, and this refreshes in real time too. So if you log out and go back to your overview page, the next time you come back in, it refreshes in real time. And if you set an alert, you'll get that alert in real time as well. Yeah. If someone changes their prices within you know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, you're gonna get an email within one minute. So uh, Juan down in Santa Monica, Santa Monica asked, can we decrease or increase the radius distance? This is a piece of feedback that we've gotten from a number of different clients. Um, right now, the default is just one mile, um, but you can actually go ahead and like hide garages that are not super interesting to you. So um, if you don't want to see what's close to you, or let's say, you know, if a garage is a mile away and you're not interested, you can just go ahead and hide that. Um, Juan, I, I was just talking with you yesterday. You know, we, we have a pretty quick development cycle. Um, we're planning on some pretty significant improvements to this tool. I think selecting your radius is an obvious one. Um, the other thing that we're actually thinking about is trying to include historical pricing. And so you can imagine uh, clicking on a certain product and then down here you'd see a price graph um, showing you how the, that price um, has evolved over time. Getting some, some feedback. Adam, you think it's super cool. We do too, man. Uh, and it's going to get even better. So uh, stay, stay tuned. Roy Bell, really great features. Now they're, they're in one place. Awesome. Glad you like it. Roy. That's my middle name. Big fan. Um, <laughs> Last thing to touch on on this, you can add as many different time ranges that you care about. Um, the next time you actually log out and log back into Smarking, these will automatically be saved for you. So if you hide garages or add different price tiers, if you go ahead and add an alert, everything's automatically saved for you guys. Um, Last but not least, I do want to say that we're pulling this information in real time. So if you load up analytics, 
and then head back to the online rate survey, you're going to see new data get populated here. And so uh, if you have any concerns around making sure that you're getting the latest and greatest, don't worry, Smarty's got your back. We try to do everything in real time. That's how we live life, real time. We're in the present moment, right? Why, why live yesterday? No, why live in the future? Right now, right in real time. Let's do it. Um, okay, so moving on, um, we talked about different ways that we could drive revenues from monthly. Yep. We talked about different ways that we could drive revenues from the online reservation. The last component, our biggest and most important component, transient. What is Mark doing for me on the transient piece, Bill? Hmm. Good question. It's those real-time occupancy alerts that they've been talking about. Exactly, exactly. And so this is actually uh, a pretty cool, they've got a ton of different uh, super smart data scientists working on this marketing team. Um, and so they've started to build out a suite of anomaly detection algorithms. And so the first iteration of these algorithms is just to monitor a garage's occupancy and then send an alert out if we see a significant deviation from the historical pattern, either higher or lower, right? Correct. And so uh, I guess in this example, we're taking a look and we're getting a real-time alert that basically says the garage's real-time occupancy is significantly higher than its historical average. And then uh, the email provides you with the link that you can click to quickly dive in. Yeah. And so this notion of dynamic or variable pricing, right? Especially, you know, going back to the, the basic marketing thesis, which is uh, parking should function more like the airline and hotel industries, um, really trying to be a little bit more nimble around our rates. Um, we hope that maybe this is like our first step in that direction. If we get an email like this, it turns out there's a big event that, you know, somehow slips off of our radar, uh, we can go ahead and call the garage manager and put an event rate out there, right? Exactly. Same thing if you're, if you're on the go, like we often are. This email is going to come through to your phone, pick it up on your phone email, uh, dive directly into the dashboard or shoot it over to your garage manager um, just to understand what's going on. And on the inverse too, if the occupancy is lower than the normal, um, you may want to do something to potentially drive um, revenue or potentially there's a street closure or something you want to understand that's um, negatively affecting your business. Right. And for municipal clients who maybe aren't really looking to do full-fledged and every pricing really from a revenue standpoint, you know, this could all even be helpful from a staffing perspective, right? And we all want yep. uh, different, our partners to have good experience every time they're entering or, entering or exiting a garage. And so if we're seeing a significantly higher number of entries at a facility, um, we might be able to send some more staff over there to the entry and exit gate, make sure that people are queuing properly and having a good experience. And so um, I think this is this is pretty cool. Yes, yeah. um, guys. Any questions that you might have on the on the real time occupancy alerts? Um, I know one question that I have: Who the hell is Rachel? Oh, Rachel's um. Is that a data? One of our engineers' girlfriends? I don't know. I think, so. a, I think it's Dewey. Dan's taking his head Not Dan. <laughs> not Dan. <laughs> Um, Carla from Walnut Creek wants to know, can we add this to the map? Carla, we haven't gotten to the map yet. Um, but I digress. <laughs> um, and so, uh, what I will say about this feature, guys, um, is this is the start of something that's going to be pretty cool. And so, um, like I said, on, on our, we're, we're really blessed, Phil and I, to work with some super smart people on our engineering team. A lot of the work that we've been doing over the last two years is really just to build out that basic infrastructure. Um, what you're going to see from us going forward is um, some more advanced things from a data science perspective, right? Anomaly detection algorithms. And so right now we're starting with occupancies, but you can imagine that um, anomaly detection, kind of like alert functionality, um, can be way more robust. Yeah. Um, and so this is this is actually a feature that just got released uh, two or three weeks ago, um, and all smart and clients are eligible to sign up their locations for real-time alerts. And so if you'd like to be a part of the program, shoot Bill an email, shoot me an email, uh, we can get you going right away. Um, we'd, we'd love to have you guys uh, participate in the program and give us feedback, um, frequency of alerts. Um, we Just uh, as a caveat, um, we do need to make sure that obviously we have accurate real-time occupancy information for your facility. Um, some locations are more inaccurate than others for basically data quality issues originating at the parks machine. Uh, and so we want to be sure um, that the you know the garage is eligible first. But but please reach out um, if you have any uh, in, in interest in, in participating in the real time alerts program. It's exciting, super exciting. Yeah. Um, last but not least uh, is um, basically we've done some cool things from a uh, information transparency and uh, digitization, digital wayfinding perspective, and so. 
Um, what we've heard from our clients over the last two years is that parking is never kind of like an end in of itself, right? And so kind of parking like all mobility is really a means to an end and that there's a host of stakeholders who are involved in parking decision making that are not necessarily parking people. So if you're a city, you're going to have politicians uh, who, who might have uh, interest in understanding what parking dynamics are. Um, if you're a you know a private owner of garages, you know your leasing team or your office manager wife might want to know. And so the goal is that we have to make the information highly communicable so that non-parking people can really start to understand parking dynamics, and then hopefully we can make some smarter decisions around managing our assets once we've got everybody on board. And so in the municipal sector, uh, Bruce Wayne went ahead and, and purchased the smarting map, which is a separate feature. It's not included in the software, so uh, get in contact um, if you're interested in mapping. Surprising how much Gotham City looks like the city of Santa Monica. I know I know Juan's on here. Kind of weird, right? Uh, that you have a Santa Monica Boulevard in Gotham City. They go on vacation there. <laughs> so it's very familiar. This is a beach area down there. Right. So um, this is basically showing us on and off street. Uh, and so uh, those gray boxes is where we actually don't have real time. But you can see as the cursor is scrolling through the day, we're watching these parking dynamics evolve. Um, it looks like on this particular day, must have been a really beautiful day in Gotham City because these beach lots are really filling up here. Um, interesting. I didn't know Gotham had a beach. No, but um, I'm down to go. Check it out. <laughs> um, and then the other cool thing about the mapping feature is uh, SmartKings actually using the Google Maps API. So any of the functionality that you guys uh, are used to exploring in Google Maps, um, you're going to have that functionality in the SmartKings mapping application. Go ahead, throw it into satellite view and really zoom in on what businesses are uh, utilizing the parking inventory. So if we know a certain street is always busy, we might be able to attribute that to a really popular restaurant or bar or something along those lines. Or a new restaurant or a new right. bar, or something that's changing the actual dynamics of the city. Right, so um, we're super excited about mapping. And uh, if you guys have any questions, now's the time to ask. Uh, shout out to Juan and the team in uh, Santa Monica for letting us show their map. Um, <laughs> can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Um, uh, <laughs> um, Adam Raffle wants to talk a little bit more about why count could be off, data origination issues, solutions to address. Um, so I think people who have been in the parking industry for a long time kind of know that a lot of times the parks equipment uh, you know, isn't really accurate. And so there's a number of things that can go wrong. You can just keep the gate up, right? So we're having people who are entering the facility, not pulling tickets, that throws our counts off. Um, open tickets is a big problem. And so um, there's different things that we've done to address uh, those issues. Actually, one of the earliest applications of the anomaly detection is sometimes it's, it's just a good way to detect if something's going wacky in the facility, right? If we're not getting those entries, then it's very well could be that the gate's just been popped up and people are entering the garage and, you know, we need to get on it. Um, from an open tickets perspective, we actually have a, a pretty neat way of uh, monitoring those. Um, we just uh, are able to infer exit time based on an entry time. So we have a lot of data around successfully closed tickets. And so around, uh, you know, if we see somebody pull a ticket at 8 a.m. on a Tuesday, um, we've got a lot of data around uh, how long those people typically stay, and we go ahead and close out that ticket if we see it sitting in the database for more than a day or two or something along those lines. And so um, data accuracy is something that we, we take very seriously. A lot of times it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, there's different things that we can do uh, from a calibration perspective, mapping it to manual accounts, mapping it to sensor data, or whatever else you might have. Um, so uh, this is all part of our process. Um, and it's something we take super seriously. Um, all right, so moving right along, because we're coming up right at the end of the hour, I think we're gonna be pretty good from a timing perspective. Um, but this marking API, this is, this API. is pretty exciting. API, you know what an API is, Bill? I have no idea. I've heard about it. So an API is an application programming interface. It is hands down the best way to transfer data from A to B. Anytime you send a tweet, Bill, I know you're a big tweeter. We're tweeting. You're, you're using an API. Or you upload a, an image of your car to Instagram. Yeah. Or what? So actually, guys, I don't know if you know this. Bill owns a, a taco shop. So if he's uploading <laughs> an image of a taco to Cinco Tacos uh, uh, Instagram page, basically Instagram, Facebook, all these uh, high-tech companies, they're always using APIs. 
to transfer that data. Um, when we were talking earlier about data access, I mentioned an API and how we really wish more of our vendor partners had APIs available. Um, the good news is that basically Smart can build an API for you. So the first step in our process is getting all of your data together in one place and then uh, building out uh, this robust, holistic, accurate database for all of your parking data, regardless of what system it's from. And then we actually use an API to populate all the various charts and graphs in Smarting. So any information that you see displayed inside Smarting, you can actually take the underlying API and we'll give you access to that API free of charge and communicate that data uh, to any portal that you want. And so if you've got a website, like I know Bruce Wayne might, yeah. Mr. Wayne might love to have real-time occupancy displayed on his webpage. Absolutely. Could be super cool. Um, we know some of our municipal clients have various initiatives to get organized around uh, critical uh, municipal information, parking, of course, included. And so in terms of digitizing that information and make sure, making sure that it's highly deployable, um, Smarting is able to help our municipal clients out really in, from a smart city initiative, digitize that information and get ready for some of the different things. I know uh, MIT is a, a big Smarting client and actually um, they're developing an app called Access MIT that they're going to go ahead and stream real-time occupancy information directly to the app. So that's another cool application. Um, and then in the future, you know, our viewpoint is that parking data should go wherever it wants to go. And so two exciting things that are kind of on our radar is how can we embed our client's data in a mapping application? Obviously, this is at the behest of the client. It's your data, not ours. And then everybody's talking about connecting with autonomous vehicles. Um, in my opinion, uh, we're not, those, those vehicles are not going to be driving around and around the block. Yeah. Um, vehicle miles traveled would go way up. Congestion, traffic, way worse than they are today. Um, parking is going to continue to be uh, a, a core infrastructure asset. Um, and making sure that these vehicles can interface with your garage um, is going to be super important going forward. And so um, this is something that we're trying to get more and more of our clients to use. And so if you'd like to leverage this marketing API, please get in contact with us. It is fairly technical. Um, what we do is we give you access to the API and we let your technical team basically leverage the data. The good news is kind of the back end is, is usually the hard part. And so um, you would have to build out the front end infrastructure. Um, our first client to leverage the API with the San Diego International Airport. So if you go to their website, you go ahead and you hit parking and scroll down, you're going to see real-time occupancy information across uh, their terminals. Oh, the Sam's Marking guys always throwing their logo everywhere. Always branding. Oh my goodness. They can use a little humility. <laughs> <laughs> but rest assured, guys, um, the Smarking API, your data, hashtag free your data. Um, <laughs> Smarting will build you an API. Smarting has your API. Um, and to whatever extent you want to put your information, we're happy to help you facilitate that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's all we've got for you. Um, that's us. Uh, that's Bill. Look at this great beard. Again, any, great beard. any uh, positive encouragement on the beard, you can go ahead and throw that in the question the box. I'll take the compliment. Um, any last questions, guys? Uh, Let's see. Matt Andrews in Chicago, what current parking equipment vendors do you work with? Um, I think the current count is like over 37. Yeah. Um, most of your major parks vendors, Amano, Hub, E-Data, uh, Tiva, uh, Meta Brands, Parkion, IPS, Civic T2. Smart, T2, uh, the mobile payment, Park Mobile, Pay by Phone, Passport. Um, at this point, we're, we're up and running at over a thousand different locations. We've got a whole bunch of different clients. And so um, we've almost interfaced with all the major guys where we haven't had an integration. It's really with these one-off projects. I heard of uh, Clancy Systems the other day. That was a new one for us. So uh, Matt, don't hesitate to reach out and uh, we can talk about your vendors a little bit more. Um, William Clay, how's it going, William? Representing the premier team. Uh, can we share a copy of this presentation? Um, absolutely. Uh, and so um, we'll go ahead and email out this presentation um, to everyone. Obviously, a big portion of the of the presentation really wasn't in the slide deck. Uh, it was in the in the in the dashboard. And so um, you know we're we're happy to share this information with you guys. Um, but the best thing is we love doing user training. We love sitting down with our clients. And so if this is something that you want to do with your specific location. Uh, just go ahead and reach out, schedule some time with us. Um, we love talking to clients and getting feedback on the product. So please
please don't hesitate to do that. We can walk through some of this information with you in particular. Uh, oh, Roy Bell coming in. Keep the beer. <laughs> Thank you, Roy. <laughs> You're the beer. <laughs> Um, all right, guys, we're a little bit past 11 o'clock. Uh, if anybody has any last questions, please uh, send them over to us. Um, I, can't, I can't tell you enough uh, how much we appreciate you guys doing business with us. Um, I think two years ago, we had all seven clients when Bill and I joined the team, and I don't really think that we'd be in the position that we're at today without you guys. So um, thanks so much. And, and Bill, what do you think? Should we do this again? I think we'll do it again. Yeah. Maybe 30 days. Every 30 days, days quarterly? Well, I don't know. <laughs> we'll get some feedback. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to keep building new stuff. Um, and if you enjoyed the webinar, please uh, uh, let us know um, if we get some positive feedback. And this is something that we might be doing on a regular basis uh, just to keep you guys informed around some of the cool stuff that we're doing. So uh, thanks, guys. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Get in touch. Talk to us. We love talking to clients. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, guys. Adios.